So have you ever heard me say that emotions are bad? Have you? No. no, emotions are the end product of an experience. So then, do I react in my life? Yep, I do. But the question is, how long are you gonna react? That's the real question. Because if you keep that emotional reaction going on for an extended period of time, sooner or later it'll become your identity. And then people say, why are you so bitter? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you suffering so much? And your brain, in that emotion, you're in the emotion, which means you're in the chemical residue of the past, is going to call up the event because you're emotionally connected to it. And you're gonna say, I'm this way because of that past experience. So then, imagine what I do with people. I, we have people that have been abused. We have people that have been traumatized, that have been um, assaulted, we have people that have had very, very difficult, difficult pasts. And have you ever heard me say to, to revisit the event? Have you ever heard me say that? Never do we need to revisit the event because once you do, you open the box. But what we want to do is overcome the emotion because that's just what's lasting from the event. So you sit a person down and the moment you sit him down, what do you think the body's gonna do? It's gonna look for something to recreate that emotion because that's the person's identity. Are you with me still? So if I make, make the person, if I inspire the person to sit there and they're sitting there and all of a sudden they're noticing that they're hot and they're irritated and their stomach is twisting and all of a sudden, it's a, a group of sensations, a group of feelings that they have called all along frustration. But the different sensations, the moment you name it, it becomes an emotion. But what it is, is just bodily sensations. It's energy that's stuck in the body. So the body is looking to go back to the past. It's believing it's in the past. Are you with me still? So if the person becomes aware that their body is doing that, and like training an animal, allow the body to feel that emotion and then settle it down into the present moment. When you settle it down into the present moment, the body starts to trust the present moment and move out of the past. And there's a release of energy. Then the body goes, well, wait, wait, wait a second, what's gonna happen in the next moment? Because, and it starts doing that. And it starts to try and anticipate the future and you settle the body back down into the present moment. And every time you do that, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind and your will is getting greater than the program. And all of a sudden you start to lower the volume to that emotion. And when you bring, begin to break the addiction to that emotion, the side effect of breaking that addiction is called joy. It's called freedom. All of a sudden, the body's saying, I don't want to be tormented anymore. Now, does that mean you shouldn't grieve over things that you lose? Grieving is a biological process. It's neural pruning. It's a death of circuitry. It's a death of emotions. It's, it's the absence, a void of something in your life. And that's important, but in grief, sooner or later, you got to come to a greater understanding about death, a greater understanding about loss a greater understanding so that you can adapt to those conditions. Every time I sit with someone and they start complaining about their life, and I let them go for a few minutes, and then I go, oh! You know what I say to them? You only complain about your life when it's not working. And the emotion that you're feeling right now is keeping you connected to the past. You never do this when your life is working. And so I don't have a problem with moving through the stages of emotions, but I also know that what a person really wants more than anything else is to be free. People want to be free. And I have witnessed transformation on every culture, on every skin color, every shape, every size, every age, I've witnessed it. And the same radiance that takes place in a person's face, a light behind their eyes, a different physical, physical presentation of their face is eminent, it's real. And that person has worked
to overcome themselves. And so it's not that we shouldn't feel emotions. We should feel those emotions and feel them completely. And like a child, get over it though. And just let it out and then go. When we witness people analyzing their life within some disturbing emotion on the brain scans, over and over again, we saw their brain getting worse. Just, just worse. And I would go, excuse me, Hector, what the hell were you doing in there? Oh, I was just caught up with my ex and the kids. and my aunt. Well, you know, I want you to know that that's making your brain worse. And so then when they start reasoning that, and they understand I'm not going to give them the answer to their problems because when a person is suffering, what are they looking for? They're looking for me to take them out of their suffering and I can give them the answer, the, the correct answer to their problems and they will argue against me. They will argue the entire time. No, but no, but no, but no. Well, and no, no, I don't, I don't, I just say, take the ride with me. Give me four days, give me five days, cross the river, get beyond yourself and get beyond that emotion. And the memory without the emotional charge is wisdom. And that's the name of the game because the soul can't go to the future, can't create a new adventure, can't journey back to source if you're living by some emotion that's keeping you in the past. The soul can't even, doesn't even know what to dream about. It can't because it's seeing the future through the lens of the past. So then when the person starts coming up against themselves and they're sitting there and you say you create your reality. All right, well, then I'm going to have a thought about what I want, but they can't control their thoughts. That's because their body's influencing their mind. So the only way they're going to begin to liberate energy is to be still and to know that they're God to be greater than their body. And every time they settle it back into the present moment, they're lowering the volume to that emotion. And now they become the mind. And the body is no longer the mind. And when the body is finally free, they'll see possibilities they never saw before. I've seen it too many times. And all of a sudden, all that person wants to do is be in the present moment and become more happy. They want, to, they want more of that. But living in guilt or grief or shame or unworthiness. I mean, someone tell me they lost a loved one the other day. And I said, well, okay. How long have you been grieving? Oh, about a year. Really? Okay, well, suppose it was you that left and you were looking at the person you loved moping around for a year. What would you say to them after a year if you truly loved them? Get over it and have a happy life. I'm doing great. You should make yourself happy. You really love me? Live a happy life. That would be the greatest testament of love for each other. Because if you're suffering, then I, uh, you know, you're making this hard on me. And so then we always have to update our versions about reality because it's the only way that we adapt. Don't believe everything you've read or heard. It just may not be the truth. There's always a greater truth that you and I can begin to investigate. Surely someone and eternity has had similar problems, you and I, and have gotten beyond it, yes or no? So study that person. You wanna be wealthy? Study wealthy people. Don't just have some panacea that you're just gonna get wealthy. Read about wealthy people and find out that they lost everything and failed miserably 20, 50 times. But what they had as a, a characteristic, a quality in their personality is they were persistent and they kept changing, and they kept forgiving and letting go of the past and kept going. And sooner or later, they ran into it. And when they had all the money they wanted, it was never about the money. It was just about that they could prove to themselves that they can do it. And you and I are no different than that. But if you can't create a future because of some emotion that keeps you in the past, you're gonna have to square off with that emotion. And when you sit down and your body has all those physical sensations and it's getting vigilant and it wants to get up and it wants to move and, and you're just going, wow. And you're settling it down and you're working with it. You gotta agree with me that something greater in you is climbing out of that body. Something greater in you is awakening. And when you're able to overcome those emotions, truly break the addiction don't you know that you'll return back to your life and face the person that betrayed you? 
and you will see a part of yourself that you used to be that you no longer are and you're not going to have anything else but love for them. In fact, you're going to have compassion for them because you're going to realize how stuck they are and you're liberated and free. True forgiveness is when you take your attention off somebody because you've overcome the emotion and that gives them permission to show up differently in your life because you freed yourself and you freed them and all of a sudden reality begins to unfold in mysterious ways and that person shows up and says forgive me I am I was so wrong and you're over it already and you're just like go on with it man I'm I'm in a new life I would have never been in this new life if you didn't betray me. Thank you.